Hey, I think it's on there, my uh, Faulty GoPro 9. Yep, it is. Well, hello, standing here at the old uh, Monarch 10 E manufacturing light. Now, this lathe here doesn't have the uh, thread cutting and all the stuff that the uh, toolmaker lathe has, but it's just a great machine. And you can do an awful lot of stuff with this machine. And the machine has a considerable amount of wear. And uh, I'm going to show you later, at a later time, and I have kind of pointed out a few things about getting the best out of your worn machine, okay? Because... Uh, it, if you even have a brand new machine, when you're chasing uh, close tolerances, all of a sudden the machine becomes made out of rubber. And so you, you got to use those nuances like my wife's guitar playing, right? Okay, now one of the most interesting things that uh, uh, I heard years and years ago is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you some of the funny ones is, uh, if you can't make it good, make it big. <laughs> I always like that one too. <laughs> and if you can't do it, teach it. <laughs> I find myself an unlikely teacher, that's for sure. But people say I'm doing okay, so I'll just keep going, okay? That sounds good and let's get on it. Now, what I was gonna get to is you can know how. But there's another thing missing, and that's why. Okay, now what can this uh, uh, fancy uh, lathe do? Well, one of the things that it can do is you can turn um, pre-hardened metal, you know, 4140s and stuff, pre-hards, to high accuracy. As a matter of fact, what I found is the harder the material, the easier it is to hit uh, close tolerance. And I'll get more into that too. But uh, the reason is, for me, the biggest one is fitting precision bearings. And we're going to walk around over here and I'm going to show you some tolerances. Let's have a look at that. I hope you're doing good. Okay, you're going this way, and I'm going uh, around the other way. Hey, that looks, uh, I think, okay. I'll probably move once I get over there. And I'm coming as fast as I can. Aha! Now, this is a good reason. This is a spindle I built. And it's got barred and bearings in it. And, uh... I was looking, I was actually very shocked uh, at a Dumore spindle, 3800 bucks. Now a spindle like this, this is much more sophisticated than the Dumore spindle you'd buy from them. Um, I, I, I would estimate this spindle would cost about five, six thousand dollars. And I made this myself. And I used mostly scrap materials except for the bearings. And the bearings themselves, uh, they were a surplus uh, to another company, and I got a hold of them for, for quite cheap, and I engineered this uh, spindle around the bearings. <laughs> and I'll show you some more on, on the spindle design. But in the old days, what I'd have to do, I'm going to build something like this, and I had a, uh, uh, the way that I had that, that could do it was a Lodge and Shipley power turn geared head lathe, about 18 by 60, big chunky thing. It'd go up to 2000 RPM, but it didn't sound good doing that. Well, what I had to do is um, machine the part. I'd send it off to have it induction hardened. And the reason I don't do hardening myself is because it's ridiculous. You know, when you can send it out, have it induction hardened to exactly uh, what the customer wants. You know, instead of thinking around with yourself with some funky oven. So that's why I, I, I did that. And then once you get it back, you have to have um, uh, the uh, journal's uh, cylindrical ground. And I could do that on my uh, tool and cutter grinder, see, because it's small on this one anyway, because uh, the spindle shaft is small. So I could uh, grind, uh, grind that in. But if you're using uh, pre-hard 4140, 
on a, on a Monarch 10 E, then you can just skip the grinding and the uh, hardening and all that stuff and just save a whole bunch of time and money and make it out of pre-hard. Now, let's have a look at uh, some specs here. This is pretty interesting, I'd say. And we're going to, uh, for about a 1 inch, 7 to 30 millimeter. Um, let's see, we'll call it a, a non-rotating fixed bearing. A class of fit T. Plus, 1 and a half tenths to minus 1 and a half tenths. That's three tenths from line to line. Zero will be the exact size of the bearing. And zero's where you want to be, okay? So you're going to have to hit two ten thousandths on that spindle shaft to mount that $1,200 bearing. And uh, if you think you're going to sand it with sandpaper or file it or goof it on there, you're probably wrong. But you can do it by ring lapping. And nobody does it because they're lazy. But you can get it that way if you, if you don't have this machine. You can build a decent spindle without this. But it's going to take you a hell of a lot longer. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at, uh, on that particular bearing, the, for the shaft is... Um, over, over the size of the bearing, uh, one and a half tenths. Under, one and a half tenths. Now, in the other literature here for uh, uh, Barden, uh, they basically tell you, you know, this is what you can do. And you got to be within two ten thousandths. You know, you just got to be on every component and try not to stack the tolerances. So you, you got to really be aware. And you can see that this bearing here, it, it does not go by the rule of thumb of a thousandths or two thousandths bearing fit. It, it, it press fit like people do with their, with their poor ball bearings on stuff. Now I'm going to tell you this. You can take cheap ball bearings and go to the higher spot here and give it uh, uh, one and a half tenths uh, um, positive fit, okay? And that'll make, that'll make uh, your regular bearings last longer. You know, then then just go and shotgun at it. No, just give it a thou on those sides. No, you know, and you just start squeezing that sucker, and, and it's just not going to last. You know, and so that's kind of important. Ha! Huh. Clicking the uh, faulty GoPro nine back on. We'll see if it works for a while here. Okay, so how are you going to achieve those fits? Well. You're not going to be cutting with inserts. But there are super expensive inserts that are called high shear. They might even cost 45, 50 bucks a piece, and you're going to get two cuts out of an edge. And they're usually a positive, so you're going to have two edges for, uh, you know, maybe $25 an edge. Or go the DD method and buy from Travers. Uh, micro 100 plain AR bits. This one's uh, a 3 8 I use, use uh, <clears throat> 3 8 or 1 half. And I, I think a 3 8 something like this might be 15 bucks, maybe less, you know. About the price of a box of cheap ones. Now, this will last a very long time. So we're going to use this and, and sharpen it. And I think you've seen me do it and have a very small radius and try to reduce that pushover that causes taper. That's the battle with stuff hanging out of a chuck. Okay. So what we got to do is meet that between th three ten thousandths on a length, not so far, to mount that uh, $1,200 bearing. Okay, you see what's at stake here. Okay, 
And uh, we know we're good uh, with accuracy of rotation. Uh, what was that, about 30 millionths? That's pretty darn good, huh? And if you're fitting precision bearings and you don't have good accuracy of rotation, you'll have to make the shaft slightly oversized and ring lap it, okay? I think you know what I'm talking about. And another thing I have here that I think is kind of amusing, and I got it coming up as cutting um, 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 Acme threads. And I, I, I can't watch other people's <laughs> channels cutting out Acme threads. It's really terrible. They actually buy inserts. Now, these inserts make an awful lot of sense on, you know, these things, you know, but an Acme thread is a different animal altogether. And I was watching one guy trying to cut an Acme thread with a full profile <laughs> insert. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a, I got a touch of a cold still left. Um, with a full pro, uh, uh, profile Acme threading insert, it just didn't work out. So, this is where this machine shines again, because you can use the electric lead screw reverse and use a narrow tool. You can go in and uh, cut it narrow, then start shaving the, the flanks of the threads. And the electric lead screw reverse helps greatly because you won't uh, get any error from engaging and disengaging the half nuts. Huh? How about that? And so that's going to be fun. I've been wanting to do this for a long time on that old press, just, just haven't gotten around to it. So that's happening. So if you're going to fit precision bearings, this one's out of a hard inch. That's what that looks like. You can see the high spots here. Always remember, if you take a spindle apart, you mark the spindle exactly how it comes up. Then you can look behind the bearing, find the high spots, mark it on the housing, mark it on the shaft. There, there. And if you don't do that, it's unlikely that this, <laughs> this spindle is going to have 50 millionths of that... Uh, um, Mounting surface, okay? Let's think about things before we do stupid shit. All right. So I'm going to uh, load this. And you know what? I could make a hundred little videos like this, and I just might. And uh, just kind of point out. So I talked about how, how we cut, and why. All right? and the materials and stuff like that. We can use this machine to cut uh, pre-hard material to the specifications specified in bearing in mind. The saga will continue.